Hello my brothers and sisters. Last week we took a look at the sixth plague and the war of Armageddon and now we are coming to the conclusion of the seven last plagues. Let's get into it. The book of Revelation, chapter 16, verses 17 through 21 says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great and the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island shall fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. There's a lot going on here, isn't there? We've studied about the Lisbon earthquake before and we saw how bad that was. Friends, this earthquake is going to rock this entire planet. So bad so that all islands and mountains would disappear. The book of Revelation chapter 6 verses 14 through 17 says, and the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? We have studied this, haven't we? This is at the end of the sixth seal, just moments before the return of Christ. Notice how the wicked try to hide from Christ in these mountains. They know they were finished. And it's too late for them. It's over. The Old Testament even mentions this in the book of Joel chapter 3 verses 11 through 16. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Thither comes thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened, and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, and fast overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun is and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people, and the strength of the children of Israel. This was prophesied in the Old Testament. God knows the end from the beginning. He knew despite giving us Jesus Christ to reconcile us back to Him that one day God will be taking care of business and punish the wicked. Time is coming to a close very shortly from now. The final plague of hell will destroy the nations of the earth. Babylon will disintegrate into its three components. The greatest earthquake in history would destroy the last life on earth. Huge blocks of hell weighing over 100 pounds went in the rebellion. No one will be left. In the midst of this confusion, Christ's people will be taken away. But if you are in Christ, we have no reason to worry. 
The book of Psalm chapter 46 verses 1 through 3 says this, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, when not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. We are going to go through this tribulation and see this firsthand, but it won't hurt us. A lot of Christians aren't even preparing themselves for what is about to take place during this time because for some reason they believe that we will be raptured up and be saved from it before it happens. Friends, that is unbiblical. God didn't do that for the Israelites in Egypt. He didn't do that for Daniel in the lion's den. He didn't do that for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. But he will be with us and protect us. But now, let's talk about this hell. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 17. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. Once again, the Old Testament talks about this plague. Brothers and sisters, we can't throw out... The Old Testament. <coughs> In Job 38, verse 22 and 23, we have another reference to the war of hell. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or hast thou seen the treasures of the hell, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? So the question is, what happens next? There are two things that happen. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 through 17 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead and Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Brothers and sisters, God's people will be raised and receive their glorious bodies and will be with the Lord forever, for all eternity. And the second thing that happens is this. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 8 through 12 says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The wicked who did not want the truth, who had pleasure in unrighteousness, who chose darkness rather than light, will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. It's so sad for these people and to believe that most of these people would actually consider themselves to be followers of Christ. But no, they didn't believe the truth, so they condemned themselves by their own actions. It's so sad. But God made a promise to us in these trying times in the book of Psalm chapter 46, verses 10 and 11. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Even in the midst of this, God is still with his people. Jesus is coming soon, brothers and sisters. It's time to get ready for what is about to break upon the face of planet Earth just shortly from now. Get ready. And this is John Tinsley with Everlasting Rock Ministries. And always remember, the truth never fails. God bless. And this concludes the seven last plagues. Have a good evening.